So together with Qatar uh, and Egypt, we put forward, as you know, a serious proposal that was aimed at not simply repeating the previous agreement, but expanding it. Uh, as the Prime Minister just said, Hamas responded tonight. We're reviewing that response now, uh, and I'll be discussing it with the government of Israel tomorrow. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we continue to believe that an agreement is possible and indeed essential, uh, and we will continue to work relentlessly to achieve it. We had meetings already uh, on this trip in, uh, in Riyadh, in Cairo, now today in Doha, focused on ensuring as well that we can use any pause to continue to build out plans for the day after uh, in Gaza, uh, security, humanitarian, reconstruction, governance, all bring uh, real challenges with them, but that's exactly why we are and need to be focused on them now. We're also determined to use any pause to continue to pave a diplomatic path forward to a just and lasting peace and security for the region. That is the best way, the best way to ensure that October 7th and the tragic loss of life by Israelis and Palestinians is not repeated. When I was last in the region a few weeks ago, uh, I said then that there is a very powerful path uh, that we can see before us to actually get to lasting peace and security. And it's coming ever more sharply into focus. An Israel that is integrated into the region with security guarantees from its neighbors and partners, alongside a practical, time-bound, irreversible path to a Palestinian state living side by side in peace with Israel, with the necessary security arrangements for both peoples. Uh, on this visit, one of our key objectives has been to continue to hammer out the substance and sequence of all the steps that would be necessary to enable us to move down that path. Now, that's one path. It's clear, uh, and you can see that it gets us to a destination that would benefit virtually everyone in the region and, as I said, bring lasting peace and security to Israelis and Palestinians alike. Uh, but there are those who want to move the region in a different direction and take a different path and who are actively working to sabotage every effort to move toward lasting peace and security. Just look at what we've seen in the last couple of months and indeed in the last couple of weeks. Attacks in Syria and Iraq, attacks on Israel from Lebanon, attacks on international shipping in the Red Sea, attacks in Jordan that killed three U.S. service members, and of course, the attack on Israel on October 7th. Each and every one carried out by groups trained, armed, funded, and informed by Iran. Iran and its proxies claim that they're carrying out these attacks somehow on behalf of the Palestinian people. That is absolutely wrong, and it's a cover for their true intent. They are all fundamentally about Iran's quest for power. We've been very clear that we do not want to see the conflict expanded. We don't want to see escalation. Uh, but we've also been clear that if our personnel, if our people are threatened, if they're attacked, we will respond. We will defend them. We are responding to violence, not initiating it. We're seeking to prevent escalation, not fuel it. And as we do this, we will continue to use every tool available to us to reach an extended pause that gets hostages out, that gets more assistance in, that brings calm to Gaza's civilians, and that keeps diplomacy moving forward toward an integrated and more secure region.